tell. What's up, girlfriends? Welcome to Girlfriend Therapy Podcast, our year of conversations. Mm-hmm. I've been having the most amazing time, um, having some great conversations with some amazing women. And today is no different. Today, I have the beautiful Miss Carolyn Jones. Hi, Carolyn. <laughs> Hello, and thank you. <laughs> thank you for being here. So Carolyn is a licensed and ordained minister uh, in the Office of Evangelism. She is a mother of three. She is an executive assistant, a published author, a life coach, a motivational speaker, and a travel agent, broker. Um, her tagline is speaking from M.E., which is my experiences. I love that. As she encourages other others by her experiences, challenges, and ultimate victories. Uh, her passion is for inspiring others to believe in their God-ordained purpose, their worth, and, uh, and supply despite anything contrary. Um, I'm sorry, and, and supply despite anything contrary uh, led her to develop a workshop which led her to develop a workshop, I'm sorry, entitled Our Glass, Our Time. I love that. Uh, where she resurfaces dormant dreams and encouraged with biblical proof that dreams, one, come from God and do and two, do come true. Carolyn's favorite scripture comes from Psalms 27 and 13, which is, I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I yeah. love, love, love your bio. I love so many pieces about it. And today we're actually going to talk about divorce is not a death sentence, which I think is such an important topic. Um, I know even like in pop culture, we've seen, I think last week there were like so many celebrity couples that was announcing divorce. And yeah. so, you know, it is one of those topics that I think is just ever churning. <laughs> so yes. I'm looking forward to having a conversation with you. So I'm going to throw it over to you, Carolyn, for you to start wherever you want. And we're just going to have the conversation. Okay. The re- I want to tell the reason I chose this topic because I am a divorcee and more than once. And there's so many uh, stipulations on this, on this divorce piece. If I had it my way, if I knew, let me change that. If I knew then what I know now, I right. would be with my first husband. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I would have never, we were, we were young, we got married and nobody taught us how to work things out right so as soon as the slightest thing went wrong we were like okay we're breaking up um you know speaking from myself personally like my tagline is speaking from me yes me, it's like you said my experiences I come from a family that split so half my family have long term marriages like mm-hmm. in their 30 years and then the other half of us yeah not so much so I've had different uh, comments thrown at me, you know, especially in Christendom. Some believe that I should not be married again. And yeah, well, I'm glad you don't have nail prints in your hand for me because, (laughs) (laughs) you know, it is my, it is my, my heart's desire to spend my latter years with a mate and live happily ever after. And I don't have a plan B. I believe in sticking with plan A, Um, you know, to know what I know now, I I know that I would be successful. That's, I I thought that was really interesting. You said, if you knew what you know now, you would have stayed with your first husband. Talk a little bit about that. Because I imagine that there's somebody that's listening to this that is probably having, you know, difficulty and, and probably feeling like divorce is an option or is the is the solution, right? Um, talk, talk a little bit about that. I find it really, really interesting. So when you, when you marry, you merge with somebody, you always think that you know them, even though back then, you know, um, back then I wasn't a minister. I wasn't, I was a Christian, but I was a carnal. So mm-hmm. we did live together first. And I thought I knew him and he thought he knew me. Well, when we got married, you know, the, the, um, we, you know, things changed. Like right. he thought he could still hang out all night with the fellows. And, and I'm saying, no, we're married. I don't think we're supposed to be doing that. <laughs> and so we clashed because, and we didn't go to premarital counseling. Mm. Um, um, we maintain, we maintain a crazy friendship. As a matter of fact, me and his current wife, people think we're sisters. Oh, wow. And the youngest child looks just like me. So we have not <laughs> figured that out. We still have <laughs> figured it out. So they just call him my baby. But, you know, I think when, when you're considering divorce instead of working through 
sometimes divorce just should not be an option. Yeah. Now, if there's abuse, if there's, um, you know, there are different types of abuse. There's physical abuse, but there's also um, financial, economic abuse. There's right. emotional abuse. If those things, you know, are really serious and you've tried to get help and, you, you know, if it's physical abuse, get out. Just get out, period. I just... um. I did just just assist with rescue and uh, mm. domestic abuse victim yesterday. Right. Yeah, and, and this is know, domestic. Even, um, is this that's domestic violence month as well as breast cancer awareness month? Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. It yeah. is. And um, it's it's so funny. I'm you know I was young and now I'm old, <laughs> older, and I still am. You know, if someone calls me, I'm I'm going to help them because. Amen. But you know. I, I believe in, and we, you know, me and my first husband, we look at each other like, of course, his new wife is saying thank you. Right. And, you know, we laugh about that. But, you know, we know that if we had the right counseling, yeah. if we had, the, you know, I was a, I was the epitome of a spoiled daddy's girl. Oh. And when I said, daddy, he's not doing nothing I want him to do. He said, come back home. Oh, daddy. how old were you? We got married. I was 19. He was 21. Wow. And we didn't stay married any time. We lived together longer than we were married. Well, how long did y'all, were y'all married? Or how long did y'all live together and dated? And then how long were y'all together once you got married? We we lived together for two years. Wow. So I was probably, when we finally got married, I was probably 20 and he was 22. And then we didn't even stay married a year because, oh. you know, we started fussing. And then even after his his parents you know still still I still did the same stuff with his parents going <laughs> over there you know we had a child right. and I just think you know I just think that we somebody should have coached us yeah so somebody, you guys did have a, a child together yes oh. yes yeah that's my daughter that's in heaven oh so, yeah she she was our daughter and um you know like I said we've maintained friendships now there's also the other side of it where I did know what I know now. Right. But my most recent husband decided he didn't want to be married anymore. Uh, and, you know, we can't override the will of man. God won't even do that. Right, right. So I did try to talk him out of it because it came as a surprise. And, you know, even with that, I get comments like you had to see it coming. Well, I didn't. Right. I didn't see it coming. I like, why did you have to? Right. Why would they think that you have to see it coming? That yeah, I yeah. don't know, but you know, and and in all of this, I had to maintain my self worth. Yeah, I had to talk to myself and say, "This is not going to stop you, and it doesn't stop God from you know that the Bible says it's His good pleasure mm -hmm. to give me the desires of my heart, and He knows the desires of my heart." Amen. This this marriage, you know, we went to counseling. I knew. You know, I knew I heard from God. He said he heard from God. We wow. still cannot override free will. The interesting part about this is I just admitted that I still see myself as his wife. Oh, wow. And so it's difficult to date. <laughs> so are you are you two still friends? Um, we, we don't communicate, but Aww. it's interesting because if I call and ask him to do something, it's like his immediate thing is to do it. Oh, so, you know, a couple of times he got like frustrated afterwards, like you want to stop calling me. And I'm like, no, I'm really not. Because we were, we were friends for so long right. that, um, you know, I, that, that he just was my go to. He's Black Ivor. And oh. then people marvel because I don't speak ill of him because his value did not go away because right. he didn't want to be my husband anymore. Right. Right. Yeah. That, that's really, uh, you said so many really interesting things. Again, I think the fact that you are, you said that you still feel like you're his wife. So it's difficult mm -hmm. for you to date, like put a pin in that because we had to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> but then the fact that you still, you know, could call on him and he, you know, still helps. Um, I, and there, there was a third point in that it totally slipped my mind, but talk a little bit about the, why you feel like you're still, married to him and, and make you know making it hard for you to you know to date well again i didn't want the separation and divorce and i honestly feel that it's due to his low self-worth 
mm. that you know that self self sabotage ah, situation. Right. Um, his daughter and I still travel together. His oh. daughter <laughs> still calls me ma, oh. and and I, you know, I I have we we were we were separated for four years before we got divorced. And yeah. the, the reason that I initiated that was because I said this if this is over, I can't I can't even date. How I'm gonna date and I'm uh -huh. married, right? And then I had someone, I was talking to someone and I was sharing with her how lonely I was. And you know, even as far as a plus one, I stopped right. going out with my friends because I didn't have a plus one. And she said, um, a man can't find a married woman. Oh, and yeah, that he, yeah, and that, that was like yeah. that's so subtle. It jolted me. Yeah, and I was like, "Dang, that's not oh consoling." Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that mean you, so you had to initiate the next step, or yeah, yeah, wow. because I said, you know, and I just called him and I said, "Hey," he said, "Hey," I said, "You know, we're 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 done, right?" I said, "Because if we're we're really done, I think we should just go ahead and file for divorce." And he said, "Okay, let me know what I need to do." That's how we talk to each other, you know. And so I said, so so we are done. And he said, yeah, I think we are. And I said, okay. So, you know, I said, let's just walk through it together. Right. And, um, you know, let's just, let's just make it happen. So we did. And we hit a little glitch. And I called him and I was upset. And he said, where are you? And I told him. And he came where I was. And he said, just calm down, Carol. We'll, we'll, we'll get through this. That's just who... He is. Yeah. You know, um, again, he was my best friend for years before we got married. And when he asked me to marry him, I said, okay, you know, we messing up a good friendship or are we enhancing a good friendship? Right. And so we, you know, I I I I, I literally prayed and waited this time to get uh -huh. the okay from God, the approval of my pastor. I was like, I don't do too good in this area as far as making decisions. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh. okay, somebody, I need some checks and balances right and, and we did it and uh i mean we, we had a we had a really fun marriage and you know i did notice when he started being a little distant and i was saying is everything yeah everything's fine and i mean he woke up one morning called me at work and i said i said hey what's going on girl we're going to a meeting and he said yeah i'm out of here so it was so subtle oh, i mean my. so abrupt not subtle it was abrupt <laughs> But um, so the reason I, and this is the first time this has happened to me because yeah. it's it's like you know I'm I'm still Mrs. Jones, and and you know which it revealed some things that I need to work mm. through before I call myself linking up with somebody because I remember yeah. once doing a marital counseling, they said, is there anybody in your past that if they come back, mm. you will regret this marriage? Wow. And I said, no, but if somebody asked me that today, wow. if he was to come back and wow. say, Carolyn, let's try this. And I'm with someone, I would be like, Oh man, you know? So, but again, you know, the uh, part that is not a death sentence, it doesn't devalue me. Right, exactly. Um, you know, I still got it going on. I still... Yeah, I that was like, when, I, when you came on, I was like, oh my God, you're so beautiful. Like, you look <laughs> amazing. I think it is literally, I think in, you know, of course you were on a panel a few weeks ago talking yeah. about uh, the woman king, but it had been years since I've seen you and you yes, look exactly... Yes the same <laughs> well thank you and you do too Jeez. you know we follow one another on facebook right and so yeah um but um you know it's not it, it doesn't devalue me i have gone out a couple of times but i'm telling you if you're talking about somebody struggling trying to make a decision there's nothing out here <laughs> stay where you are so that you... and that's that's what i was going to ask you like what is it like dating um, you know, as a woman of a particular age in 2022, where everybody's seeing like every everybody's doing everything like digital. Like, are you on any dating sites? Like, how do you meet? Okay, how I'm is on, that? I'm on, I'm on two dating sites, and I wouldn't do it any other way. I met I met my husband on a dating site. We just remained friends for so many years. Wow, because you know, people 
and I and I've run into some fraudulent people, but I have a keen sense of discernment. And so I know, you know, I know right off. And I'm not gonna leave the comfort and privacy and, and safety of my home and go to no dude's house. So we're gonna talk for wow. a while. We're gonna meet a couple of times where I drive my car, you drive your car. And my mm. sons are both mama's boys and they don't play when it comes to <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, I always say I know people. Right. <laughs> I am not victim material. I am not victim material by no stretch of the imagination. Exactly. So and I, and I'm and it was you know, it's kind of fun, but when it comes to real conversations, and believe it or not, so I turned sixty three next to Wow. Tuesday. Wow. Yeah. This and the, Beautiful. the conversations I and I ask I ask questions like the pre K mentality, like do women really fall for themselves? Say say that again. I ask guys, do women really fall for this stuff you're saying? <laughs> right. Did you just say that? <laughs> you know, uh, or I'll say, you you're talking about sex. What is my last name? You don't even know my last name. Wow. And if something happens to me when I do this with you, is your health insurance going to cover me? (laughs) Is this what we're doing? And I know, you know, just kind of get the blank stare like, what is she talking about? (laughs) But you have to be careful out here because even guys my age and older still think they macking. Dude. So this it's, it's so much is is crazy because I think like you, um, of course, my husband and I, we've been married for it'll be 31 years in February and yes. we were 20 years old when we got married. So babies and we had no idea. Um, and we look at it now, we just kind of laugh because it really was nothing but the grace of God because we were complete opposites. You know, mm-hmm. he was raised in a, uh, uh, you know, Kansas City, Missouri. I was raised in, you know, West Philadelphia. So we were. Just, wow. he was raised in a dual parent household. I was raised in a single parent household and, you know, but we were really, really opposite. Um, and, and we were so young, but we did get marriage counseling. In fact, his dad was the one, I don't even know if we had marriage counseling or if his dad just kind of talked to us. Yeah. And yeah. I never forget his dad was like, you know, when you wake up every day, you know, look at each other and think how, what can I do to make this person's life easier? Yeah. Not what can yeah. they do to make my life easier, but what right. can I do to make their life easier? And and it was that was such important information and we still kind of carry that to this day because because we're so different. What mm-hmm. works for me doesn't work for him. Mm-hmm. And so we had to get to know each other, you know, I mean not just intimately, but really those little subtle things like he's an yes. early riser. Mm-hmm. I go to sleep late, like you know, really balancing all of that um right. because all of it is important. Um and like you were saying with your 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 first husband, I was the one that was going to the club and my husband mm-hmm. was raised in, you know, a Christian household. I was kind of raised in an open religion kind of household. Right. Uh, so we <laughs> That's got a good way to put it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we got married. I mean, I was literally the one going to the clubs and, you know, mm-hmm. I'll be ironing my clothes, getting ready to go out with my girls. And he's like, um, you know, he's like sitting there reading, like literally sitting there reading the Bible. And he'd be like, oh, babe, yeah. listen to this. And he's like, you know, reading stuff in the Bible. I'm just like, okay, like, whatever, you know. <laughs> but somewhere, somehow, you know, um, and it wasn't even that, you know, he changed me or was trying to change me or I was mm-hmm. trying to change him. It, you know, God just gave us the wherewithal to just kind of give each other the space. Yeah. I mean, we were very young. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we, we just kind of, I don't know, just kind of figured it out over the years. Mm-hmm. And and then on top of that, as we got older, you know, our, you know, we kind of change a little bit as well. Yeah, and so yeah. really just kind of giving each other the space to, to change, you know, or to grow rather. Well, that's um, maturity and intentionality. I like that intentionality. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because I knew, um, you know, some things about my husband that I didn't really care for, but it wasn't a deal breaker. And he certainly, oh my gosh, he certainly put up with a lot with me. You know, <laughs> he did. You know, I was going out speaking engagements a lot. Oh, wow. And then it's so funny because it worked for us that he was the domestic, domestic one. I mean, he could take a shaft 
and make it into a beautiful place. Wow. He just, he loved plants. So if I wanted to make up with him, I didn't, I don't do flowers and all that. You know, I bring that joker home a plant <laughs> and he forget why he was mad at me. You know, oh. I remember, you know, we both worked at Booz Allen. I remember when Booz Allen was getting rid of all of the office plants because oh, of wow. the to maintain them. And they said the EAs had first dibs. And so I called my husband and I said, you better bring the truck because you, know, <laughs> you can get any plants you want. He lost his uh. mind. At some point I said, look, that's enough. And he was like, come on, come on. It was like like the mother and the child, like that's enough candy. Like you can't get. And so, wow. you know, people often laughed at us because we had a, we had a ball. Even now, yeah. it's certain things that um that we had that would crack us up. Because if he texts me, he might say, yo, I had to go to the truck. And and wherever I am, if he texts me, that is hysterical <laughs> because whenever, so he managed the house, I managed the money. He was retired. I worked. Um, it, we, 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 we just complimented yeah. one another. And, um, but if he ever went to the store, and he didn't have enough. He don't. He say, um, "I'll be right back. I have to go to my truck." In that say, coin. <laughs> yes, I would say, "Stop doing that. Just call me because he would leave. Because oh. he'd be so embarrassed, he wouldn't go back, and he would leave." And I mean, since we've been separated, he has <laughs> say, "Yo, I had to go to the car." That's and so he funny. Knows, he knows him. That's all he says. He doesn't say, "I don't respond," but he knows I'm cracking up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so like, I mean, having had like a a great relationship, because one of the things that you know, tell my children and they're adults, and you know, mm -hmm. one of the things I always try to remind them, and I think a lot of times people think this is that when you get married, they think that you have, like, something turns on. Right. And it's right. like, no, you just, mm -hmm. like, you act the same way you did the day before. Mm -hmm. You act the same way, like, and you just continue to do life with each other the way exactly. that you've been doing life with each other. Right. And I right. think that's one of the pressures people put on themselves when they want to either think about getting married or once they yeah. get married. It's like, okay, now I have to be something different or do something different. Yeah. And it's like, no, that, yeah. that, like for me, that's one of the best bits of advice I think that I can offer, um, yeah. you know, the people that's looking to get married. Yeah. It's like, no, and, you're and still the same person. And looking to stay married. Yeah. I don't believe in irreconcilable differences. I believe that's a cop-out. Exactly. Because you can reconcile um Again, you know, barring those three yeah, things, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, money, emotion, physical, you know, barring those three things because those things are hateful. Yeah, and and I was in a relationship once where it was verbal abuse, and I tell you, if I had to choose, I'd rather be hit. Oh my! You cannot put a band aid on verbal abuse. Yeah. And there was months after where I would still go out and be looking over my shoulder, nervous Jesus. that this guy's going to come in and start cussing me out and calling me oh, names. Gosh. And, you know, that that's trauma. Now, you know, I don't want to be hit either because I'm clearly hitting back. Right. Um, <laughs> clearly. It's <a> clearly. <laughs> but, you know, in, yeah. in, in, in all things, there are... You know, I hear different comments because of the way our, our marriage was structured that people say he left because oh. I was I was going out speaking too much or he left because I traveled so much. When he was the one that would pack my suitcase, wow, take me to the airport. When I got home, I don't need I didn't even know what it was to unpack a suitcase. Wow. You know, he took care of all that, washed the clothes. What we had worked for us until he decided he didn't want to be married anymore. Yeah. Now, um, I never, I'm not the type to snoots and suspects, but I did go on a dating site and it matched me with him and it <laughs> said that he was a, it says, been a premier customer since 2014. We got married 2012. He left in oh. 2018. Oh. Yeah. So, and I thought. Okay, let me do the math. Yeah. Nice little nasty note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. It's a little black me. But so, you know, um, yeah, again, that's, yeah. I, I, didn't sus I didn't suspect that. You know, we had my granddaughter. We were raising my granddaughter. And, you know, I mean, he was loved wow. by my family, especially my mother. Yeah. You know, when, when I was taking care of my mother, she wanted to see him so bad. And I said, Mommy, I'll call him over. And, oh, she just blushed. She oh. said, what you do to him? I said, made him too happy and he couldn't handle it. <laughs> oh. So he's, he's a decent guy. But, you know, to, to talk about just the, the subject of, of divorcing and the different aspects of the different types of divorce, because right. I also had to divorce myself from negative people, toxic people, as a matter of fact. So in this in this season that I'm in, yeah. oh, I had a young lady. We went to uh, we went to dinner. Uh huh. And she had gone through a very tumultuous separation and divorce, and I I got her out of that too. You know, I'm I'm like I don't I don't realize my I got superpowers. <laughs> if a woman is in distress with domestic violence, wow. here I come. And I guess. They might be like, if she's this bold, she must be doing something. We don't know. You know, they don't know if I don't carry a gun. And I'm not going to carry a gun. I got, you know, I have superpowers. But nonetheless, <laughs> she was talking to me. And I said, how did you come to meet this amazing man? Mm. And where's his daddy? And she said, his daddy is happily married with his mama. So I said, okay, touche. <laughs> but she said, prior to marrying him, she got herself together. She yeah. Said, finances together. I did counseling. I did life coaching. You know, she started a business. She said she had to regain her yeah. identity without him. And that piqued my interest. I said, what exactly I like that. am I doing to prepare myself for the type of man I want? Because I've always, I'm, I'm an empath. I'm a nurturer. Mm, right. I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I don't mind if I make more money. Well, that's past tense. Right. I'll tell you what I will not do. I will not link up with a man that I make more than anymore. I will not financially take care of a man. I, right. I am positioning myself to be the wife that attracts the man to Amen. that I want. And I want the whole, Amen. I want to be a kept woman. Amen. <laughs> we shouldn't <laughs> use cliches because you know what? I don't even really know what that means. <laughs> but I, I mean, I get it because I mean, yeah. you, you have that experience. You, you know, you kind of start doing that assessment and it's like, this is what I won't do. Yeah. And, and I think that's so, I think that's so uh, mature and mm -hmm. brilliant e even to make sure that you are learning something from the relationship, you know, your last relationship and dealing with, you know, that baggage or whatever mm -hmm. and not taking it into the new relationship. That's um, right. Because, I, you know, I think it's important, you know. One of the things I'll share with you, um, one of the things my husband and I, I mean, there were quite a few things that we've decided, you know, one, we always say that divorce was not an option. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We've always decided that we won't cuss one another or call right. each other out each other's name right it's okay if we you know we're upset with each other then you know you take a minute I take a minute and uh, right. but there was just just uh I think things that we've agreed upon yeah um, and then one of the things that you mentioned as well I love the fact that we didn't have like the, the you know the traditional gender roles within a household mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know my husband he would wash dishes and I'm not taking out trash, but if he was out of town, I would take yeah. the trash out, you know, do certain things. But one of the things that, and I'll, I'll say this and people always, I don't know, I can see the discomfort in people's face when I say this, but my husband has always been much better with money than I've been. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and it's not that I'm bad with money, but he's like, he's really pays yeah, attention know. and he yeah. plans and he budgets and he does all that stuff where right. I'm just kind of like, you know, if I want it, I'm getting it and that's it, you know. Right. But he really plans and he's always been that way. Mm -hmm. So from the very beginning of our marriage, you know, we have everything goes like he manages the money mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he gives me an allowance mm -hmm. and everything else. Like he, he does the, you know, pay the bill. Like he does everything. 
financially. Mm -hmm. It's not that yeah. I, I couldn't or I don't know how. But right. that's something that he enjoys doing and he's much better at it than I am. Right. And that's good. I mean, that's good to me. That's good. If, yeah. If, if that were our situation, because we laughed at each other because we knew each other's spending habits. Right. Like, we're going to manage the money because we're going to be broke. Right. <laughs> Sharp, but we're going to be broke. <laughs> so, and so, you know, it, it was on me. And, you know, it was nothing for him to say, you know, wait a minute, let me ask my wife. I mean, yes. one day he asked me for, for $40 and I said, uh, come on, man, don't ask me for $40. <laughs> and he said, well, I don't know if you had something planned. And when we split up, do you know he did not pull his money from oh, the joint wow. account? It still went there and I still managed it until I got wow. to the point where I said, you don't get this benefit no more. <laughs> You don't want to be married, so you don't get my strength. Exactly. You know, you, you manage you, your old buddy. You know, let 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 wherever you are manage your yeah, money. Yeah. And so, because it would just, we just wow. we did that. I know that um, the type of man I want, and you know what else? In in divorce and seeking to be uh, found, because the Bible says, "He who finds a wife." So I'm already a wife. Right. And that might be why um, I don't do too well in public because mm. even my friends say, Carolyn, you just carry yourself like you're already married. Wow. And so even though guys don't see a ring, you know, because I'm not, I've never, ever been flirty. Right. I've always been positioned for excellence. And that's from my mm -hmm. dad. And if you can't come at me correct, you probably just want to go ahead because I ask, start asking my pre-K <laughs> questions like, wow, that was deep. Who falls for that, though? Right. <laughs> you know. Wow. And then, you know, but um, you have to be, and I always use this, the Ishmael syndrome, mm. you know, in, in the Bible where um, Sarah wanted a baby and she let, you know, her husband go in the handmaid and they, they named this kid Ishmael. Right. You know, you got to wait for Isaac. You got to wait for the promise because mm. I'm running into some Ishmael's. Like, you know, I'm I met a guy ah. financially sound, right? You know, um, and he did a lot of talking. You know, I'll take care of you. You know, we, I told him that I had a date that I wanted to retire, mm. and you know, he made a lot of promises, and I watched his behavior. Wow. And I said, one thing you need to know about me, I'm never likely going to be that woman that comes home and sits and watches television all evening. Some evenings, most evenings, my television does not get turned on. Right. Until at night when I get sleepy, I look for a good show because inevitably I'm going to fall asleep on <laughs> it. Right. Yeah. It's like when me and, my, me and my husband used to talk about he wanted to watch football. Mm -hmm. I wanted to watch a show. He would say, go ahead and put your show on. So you know you're going to sleep. Because you know, you know, in a few minutes, I'm going to be watching. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, and and he just said, you know, I didn't retire to run the street with you. And I said, mm. understood. But my, my, when I'm out there, I have a purpose. I'm a yeah. business woman. Yeah. I like interacting and fellowshipping with people yeah and if that's not your thing I'm not the one because my one of my main goals is a plus one mm. I'm not going to have a man sitting at home listen because I'm yeah. still single and that was one unfortunately one of the things the little glitches that we had he would do what I wanted him to do, but it was mm. always begrudgingly. Oh. Then when he got out, you'd never know because he could have a conversation with the best of them right. and the worst of them, but it was getting him out of the house, you know? Oh. And so I want, I want somebody that's, that's like yeah. me. I want somebody that makes me tired where I say, babe, go ahead. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to stay in because I'm tired, you know? I, and right. I say that with, without that, I know, I'm not going to be matched. Yeah. And so, um, you know, on the dating sites that I'm on, I, I read the whole profile. And then if I meet somebody and they have not read my profile, mm. that conversation ends on the first conversation. Oh, wow. Because, because you're they're not, not interested. Getting, yeah. You're not getting to know me exactly. just from what you can read. The profile isn't that long. Wow. 
And if someone says something to me, I say, okay, so you just showed me that you didn't care enough to read my profile. You look at my pretty pictures and my wonderful poses. And uh, you, you, so your interest in me is not the type of interest I want. Wow. And now I had it, one guy. Oh, go ahead. And I had one guy say, okay, give me a chance. Let me go back. He said, you're just so beautiful. And I <laughs> said, okay, so go back and read my profile. <laughs> and then in talking, you know, um, oh. I do FaceTime and stuff. And I'm looking and I see an ashtray. Dude, you smoke. That's a deal breaker for me. Yeah. I'm not licking an ashtray. <laughs> And that's what <laughs> kissing a smoker is like. I'm not. And then he says, I'm just, so <laughs> I'm just a social smoker. I'm just a social smoker. So that means when you my plus one and we out, you smoking. Yeah. What What is a social uh, smoker? Either you do or you don't, right? So. I bet you have some stories. I mean, I can't oh. even. Because you, you, like, one would think that men would get more mature, like, as you get older. So it's like, that's just, I don't know. And the sad part is the ones that are, so I have an age, I have an age thing. Like I cannot even think about anything younger than 55. You know, my, um, I apologize. Oh, he's fine. Star. <laughs> um, Do you see my <laughs> Not in your bed, in your bed now. But um, I can't even think about anything anybody younger than fifty five. And my sister gets on my case, and my coworkers like, "You need a younger man." No, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't. And then anybody over sixty five, because you know, like I need, I need a pulse. I need <laughs> some energy. I need like. <laughs> Kwanzaa, one day this guy, and he was so <laughs> handsome, and I really enjoyed hanging out with him and stuff. And you know, I went over his house once. And with you know, this is after my uh, my period of time where you know trust has to be built, right? And, you know, I go to his home, and he owns his home, and it's nice, you know. And he just told me, he said, "I want to show you something that I got for you." Oh, and God. I was like, all excited, <laughs> like I love surprises. I like scared. He bought me a reclining chair. Hmm? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, uh, I said, well, why would you buy me a reclining chair? I, and I wanted to be grateful. And I'm like, is this for me to take home? <laughs> no, this is your chair for here. I had no intention of reclining in that chair. What, in front of that television? Uh. Oh. And then, you know, the true him came out. You know, you run the street too much. You know, they, they use terms like running the street. I, I go where I need to go, and then I come home. I'm not out in the street. I don't know what that means. You know, that's like something you tell your kids. You're not going to be out there running the exactly. street. Exactly. Like, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm a grown man. Yes. And so, um, you know, that, you know, that, that's a that's a Ishmael syndrome where you yeah. gotta be careful. And then I recently, you know, told a gentleman, I said, I'm not trading loneliness for misery. Oh Jesus. I'm just not because I'm content, I'm okay, I'm wow. good. And if the truth be told, and the truth should always be told, I can get a friend to be a plus one just to hang out with me right. so that I get company. I don't need somebody that that and just like you said, you know, you 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 and your husband are opposite, but you didn't try to change one yeah, another. Exactly. And as far as past relationships and past marriage, my my former husband was the only one that never tried to change me. Wow. If I said I wanted to do something, he would enhance whatever it was I wanted to do. If I was going out speaking, I said I want to give the lady something. He said, Well, you love worship music. Why don't you let me make a CD of all of the worship music oh. and we can make a cover? You know, I mean, the two of us and our minds together, we could wow. have taken the world. But, you wow. know, it's it's the low, it's the low self-worth. And, you know, I just I just don't understand. I don't believe in, you know, 
getting closure and all that stuff. If somebody wants doesn't want to be with you, they just don't want to be with you. Yeah. You know, and I think it's true. tough too because you know when you when you find that person that have all those qualities and you see like man if we would have just really stuck it out yeah. then you know we could have grown together and you know you kind of think of all that. Um how is it like now, you know, I guess do you immediately know like okay this person isn't gonna work or like when you're out dating? No, I have high hopes. <laughs> yeah. So do you date a lot? No, no, I don't. Because even even now, I mean, I was I was dating and then I took a break after the conversation with the young lady. She calls me auntie. And then I thought, let me take a break. Let me get off the dating sites and just just figure this whole thing out. And it was so much fun getting yeah. to know me as a single woman, I love that. you know, and I started writing things and mm. I started, I'm, a, I'm, you know, I edit books. And so I started back editing books, doing the things that I just love right. doing, um, serving people, you know, uh, while you wait, wait as a waiter, as someone, you know, as a restaurant, mm, I love that. Yeah. Know, serving and waiting and, and, and doing what I love doing because, you know, once I get married, my time will be spent with my husband right. and um, without regrets, you know, without regrets. So it, it's so interesting because I get, I get, I got one guy that read my whole Facebook profile. My Facebook profile is public. And he said, I was reading your Facebook profile and I hope you don't mind. And he said, I, you're an amazing woman Aww. and I'm not ready for somebody like you. Uh, you know, I almost slid in the floor and had a two-year-old temper tantrum. Like, what does that right. mean? Right. said, me, I think you're an amazing man. He said, that's not one word of profanity on your whole entire... I said, I don't cuss. So you think I'm going to put profanity on social media? <laughs> right. <laughs> what? Uh, you know, no provocative pictures. I don't do provocative. What am I gonna put on something provocative just for social media? Right. I just there's just things that I don't do, and and so Jeez. you know we laughed, and he said, um, "Well, you know, we can always be friends." And I said, "I'm not looking for a friend. Right. <laughs> Last thing I need is another male friend. Right. So I can help you with your female. We're not doing that. Uh, We're not doing that." That's so disappointing. Met, it really is. And I met a I met a lady. There's a um uh her last name is Holmes and she does storytelling. And I don't even know how we met, but I went to one of her storytelling sessions and she had a lady that was actually older than me. Oh. She had been married several times and she was has been happily married for um I think it was seven years. And so, of course, she piqued my interest. And I'm saying, what is different between this guy and all the rest of them? Yeah. She said, I allowed him to find me. Oh. And in hindsight, each relationship that I've been in, each marriage, except my former marriage. Wow. See, now I'm answering the question as we right. go on and why I still feel, you know, I still I'm trying to disconnect from being his wife wow. because he's the only one that came to me. I, I heard a prophetic um, woman that I that I used to follow and she said some women that are really desiring a husband, your husband is right in front of your face. Wow. And I told my sister, I said, the only person would be Robert. And I said, and Robert ain't a bit more interested in getting married. And the, and it was him. Wow. So, you know, time went on. We, we would take trips together and everything. I mean, we were like best giggly friends. And he'd say, Carolyn, I'm looking at you different. And I said, ew, why? <laughs> and so he said, I don't know. He said, you know, ask God to make me the type of husband that could have you. Not somebody wow. like you, but you. Wow. And so we went for a long ride. We were going to Ithaca, New York to rescue my son. <laughs> and um I I don't drive well at night and he gets vertigo. So we we had to get a room. We had to get right. a room. And so we we've done that before, you know, no problem. 
but we were laying in the beds, looking at each other, talking, and he said, I don't how I don't know how much longer I can do this Ricky Ricardo Lucille Ball stuff. <laughs> I said, You're not coming over here. <laughs> so so you hear yeah. one bed, you're in another bed. Yeah, just talking yeah, to each what else are we gonna do? We're, we're, oh. we're, so in 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 talking, I said, you right. know what? I said, I think I think the answer is yes. He said, Yes to what? I said, You asked me to marry you. I said, I think the answer is yes. Because at first I said, wow. Ew, no, it's like marrying your brother. Wow. Look, it was so crazy that when, when the pastor said, you may now kiss your bride, we kind of looked dumbfounded and it was like, oh, snap, we get to kiss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, gosh. So it's like, so we really, we really just got married. <laughs> yeah, like, wow. What just happened? So um, anyway, up until him, every relationship I was in, I initiated it. Wow. You know, even with marriage, you know, my my first husband, I said, well, you know, we have this baby and BG and E changed their law. And now you can both work here and get married. So I guess I guess wow. we might as well get married. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb stupid BG and E. <laughs> and then um you know, so when I when I think back and I told her, I said, that spoke volumes to me. Yeah. That I'm just gonna wait. Like right now I haven't been on a dating site and in, in in well, I just recently decided that this this dude was not my guy because mm. you know, you know, he just wants to watch television all the time. I'm like, it was he was bragging about how many channels you got. I said you can only watch one at a time. Exactly. Then let me ask you this. So I know you talked about like the age difference. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess the one question, <clears throat> would you consider dating younger now? And no. also do you just date like do you date just African American men or do you date, you know, like open to date any man? No. No. And my, you know, I I I reference my sister a lot because my little sister is like, I just want you to be happily married like me. I said, shut up, I saved your marriage twice. <laughs> you know, I can give people advice on what not to do. But um, so she says, You're so limited. Now here's the deal. I don't ask a guy how old are you? Of course, on the dating sites it shows their age. Okay. But and I've met few guys in person. I don't ask the age until I either hear them giggle. Mm. I can't do the I can't do the giggling thing. I just can't. oh wow. And, or um, <laughs> or they do something or say something that that reveals to me the lack of maturity. Right. Not so much the number because I've had some with the right number but the lack of maturity right. or things that they say. And I just, you know, I've tried it and I just don't need to be, I don't need to settle. I don't right. need to be measurable. I don't need to, you know, as, as I said, it's not a death sentence. I'm not laying down and giving up at the same token. I also said, I'm not trading loneliness for misery yeah and i you know i want a plus one i want my own guy yeah and i know i know he's out there amen i know he's coming soon amen. i know that i i got it now whether it be miss jones deciding to have the conversation would i jump right back into that absolutely not yeah no, we we would have to talk a lot about a lot of things and 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 get counseling yeah. for at least six months, and you know, um, I would have to make a lot of changes. I yeah. know, not a lot, but I would have to change some things in my life that I know he didn't like that I should change. Okay, and and I know I should change. Period. And, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I have, you know, everybody's rooting for me, but I still say, you know, the word divorce is is so has such negative yeah. um connotations, but at the same time it's not the worst world word in the world. Yeah. Um, some people it's it's not an it's not an option. 
And then I hear, you know, I hear a lot of women, especially my age, say, I'm fine, single. I would never do it again. Well, wow. I would never live with a man that I'm not married to. I just wouldn't. Right. I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, you know, there's just certain things that that I want in in a mate. But however, I'm, I wouldn't rush a marriage with anybody. Right. You know, so I don't have a timeline if, if we're not married in a year. Right. You know, you know, but but long as do no, we're not cohabitating. Right. It's yeah. it's it's interesting because as we're talking, I'm thinking about you know so many of my friends who are single and some are recently divorced and um and then you do get that bunch of you know the the group of women that's like oh I'm fine I'm happy I'm I won't ever mm-hmm. do it again um then you get those the other group of women that's like no I want to be married I'm you mm-hmm. know like I know uh, someone in my that I'm thinking about specifically is like and like I can't say she's an amazing wife. Mm-hmm. But from the outside looking in, I'm like, she would make somebody an amazing wife. Like she mm-hmm. cooks, she cl- like she's always taking pictures of food that she's cooked. I mean, cooking, mm-hmm. cooking, like, mm-hmm. and I'm like, she would make somebody an amazing wife. And she's been married. And I, I, I'm like, what was wrong with her husband? Because I know it wasn't her. <laughs> because I mean, just on the outside looking in, I'm like, she yeah. seems like she has it all together. Um, but it's like, what is wrong with, so it, it's hard to, be, then on the other hand, I have like male friends who are divorced and I'm just like, man, he would make a great husband. It's like, how do I bring the two of you together? But I'm not good at matchmaking. So, but you do. Well, see- the- I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. Go ahead. One of the things that I said, I would really prefer somebody introduce me. Exactly. To somebody that they've at. already vetted because I would be very open for that because I'm very like, you know, like your friend's that you have that were married and are not married. Right. Like I still, and I have friends like sisters, but I will not be in their house if they're not home. I'm yeah. very strict about yeah. that. And, um, you know, so I can't keep doing, I can't do that like I used to. Right. Um, but, you know, I told, I told one, one young lady, she said, auntie, you just got to let me introduce you to somebody. I said, okay, but do you know my age? bracket <laughs> and she even said well what if you don't know his age and he doesn't act like he's younger than 55 I said you know she said because you don't look your age right and I'm and she said you don't act your age and I'm like okay but as, as soon as he giggles that means <laughs> but so so giggle help me understand is that like a like a schoolgirl kind of giggle like yeah. it's like or is it <laughs> yeah yeah like <laughs> Oh, I'm a, a, no. oh, 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 like a Santa Claus. <laughs> but that's that's interesting because one of my good friends, he's single, <laughs> and when he goes on a date, I'm like, how did it go? And it's always like the it's like oh, her laugh just was so annoying all night, or it's, it's like always something. I'm just like, if you don't get over that, yeah. but he's just kind of yeah. like, no, I'm not like I can't do that. So maybe I'm just like, you know, are, do you think well, you're, do even, people say that you, you're too picky or? Oh, yeah. Oh, like... yeah. I get that all the time. My, 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 you know, my sister said, you're limiting your range of. And she introduced me to a guy who is a pastor. And, you know, I'm I'm open to that. Right. But if I say hello, I just want to hear hello. I don't want to hear a sermon every time I say hello. Right. And then his regulations or his requirements, and you know, he's saying my first lady, my first lady. Well, I'm not your first lady mm. right now. I'm somebody that you you you're trying to put limitations on right. me. This isn't a good job interview because I'm declining. <laughs> you well, know, you like <laughs> you sure are funny, so I'm sure. <laughs> sir. Oh, you, know, you in church twenty four seven. I'm not going to be in church 24-7. Yeah. At one time I said, you know, he called and he said, hello, beloved woman of God, how art thou? And I laughed because I really thought he was joking. <laughs> that joker was so sad. How art thou? Oh, uh, so what's, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> this is, it, it, it's not funny, but I, mean, I can only imagine like just the people that you're running into. Yeah. So I guess the question is like, you know, they're, they're, like there are women in various stages, you know, 
Um, one, I want to know, like, what's next? I'm sure, I guess, getting back out there. Um, but then marry also, that first sight. I'm going oh to marry my that gosh. first sight. I'm just going they to marry do that. that. No. <laughs> I know that. I wonder how that would work with like women of our age. Like we just go and marry that first like. <laughs> Can you imagine? They, they, yeah, they should have a um, a senior married at first sight. <laughs> See how that goes. Oh my god, we need to write the show because that would be so interesting. Oh my gosh, yes, yes, that would be. A, you know, but I, I, with me right now, each time I get ready to go back on the dating site, I hear not yet. Oh, okay. So I'm laser focused. Amen on what God is saying, what Holy Spirit is leading me to do. Amen. You know, like if I don't feel like going to when Holy Spirit says go, I'm going because that might be where dude is. Right. I am more open now to interracial relationships. Okay. I, it, it's it's so funny. I saw um a white gentleman and I was like, I was staring at him and I was like, Carolyn, stop staring. Stop <laughs> staring. Stop staring. I'm like, oh, it's so fun. <laughs> And and I was shy because I'm I'm not flirty, you know. I mean, the one he look at me and I turn away. Right. <laughs> but um, and I was like, let me find out that I'm being primed for interracial. I I'm not. I do not see myself being open to a different culture. Um, mm. um, partner, you know. Type okay. Yeah. Yeah. From, from another country. I'm just, you know, at my age, I don't have time to get through language barriers and all of that extreme, you know, give me right. a good old American man, you know, just, uh, just, I want to understand what you're saying. You whisper in my ear. I don't want to keep saying, huh? Oh. <laughs> you know, I've been flirting with this idea for years of doing like a, 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 a older couples, like not couples, older, um, single, like mingle. Mm -hmm. I've yes. been wanting to do this for years. Like, you know, people just bring somebody, like everybody brings somebody and then they yeah. just kind of mix and mingle. I've been wanting, I may have to do that and invite you. I, yeah, I, I think that would I be was nice. So, I was so serious about it a few years ago that I actually posted it on social media. It was like, if I did this, how many people would be interested? And surprise, not even surprisingly, there was like maybe three men that was like, yeah. And there was like, uh, like tons of women was like yeah I'll be interested in that That's so it, it, yeah so it seems like that you know woman to man ratio just continues to be a challenge I guess yep yep because even you know another thing men are not as open to you know to that type of exposure yeah yeah you know to say I'm a single man and I, yes I'm looking for somebody kind of thing yeah so, uh, so, I mean, I know we could probably talk for hours because it's just like this is such an interesting conversation. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's it's evening and I know you got things to do. But I want to is there anything that you wanted to share any, you know, um, any tidbits or bits of advice that you want to give to some of our, you know, listeners, male and female who might be, you know, yeah. um, just just hold on to your value and your worth and then your singleness. That. Do so much that you enjoy. Be present in the space that you're in yeah. and enjoy your life, find contentment, not to ever give up on wanting a mate, but just don't make that your sole existence. Mm. No, that's, that's good advice. So continue to do you. <laughs> yes. Yes. So that we're they... more content now. I think yeah. than I ever have been in my life. Wow. I, I love go that. from children to, you know, parents, husband, children, and then adult children, and then you know, and and then it's like, what does Carol? What does Carol like? Right, Carolyn. She is a pretty cool person. She I like is. Her. I can vouch for that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, no, I think it's good. so interesting. Um, and I, I'm sure I'll be thinking about this topic because you sparked so many thoughts. Uh, you know, just around uh, I think being single, being single at a certain age. Um, mm -hmm. after divorce and then still having that desire to be married, not just being right. coupled, but being married. And I think that's mm -hmm. such a beautiful, uh, beautiful desire. And I think when we were talking, the, you know, the other day, I do believe that God, you know, grants you all the desires of your heart. So, yes. yeah. Yes. But thank you so much, Carolyn. This is a wonderful conversation. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. This. I'm sure more will come out of this. 
But yeah. thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, I want to be, I'm, I'm curious to see the conversation that comes around this. So you guys, please comment, talk about it because I'm really interested. Uh, but thank you guys so much. Again, this marks our 42nd conversation. So we will see you guys next week for a little more Girlfriend Therapy, a year conversation. Thank you again so much, Carolyn.